All right, guys, stop me if you've heard this one before. You did a big cut, you lost a lot of weight, and then you tell yourself, oh, now I look small, I need to bulk up again. You eat a ton of food, and instead of getting big, you just get fat. Well, this is the endless revolving cycle of bulking and cutting. If you're a natural athlete, you don't need to bulk, and I'm gonna tell you why. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew Fillion, and today I wanna to talk to you guys about the pitfalls of bulking. So let's start things off talking about newbie gains. When you first start working out, if you're a brand new beginner, you get this phenomena everyone in the fitness community calls newbie gains. What are newbie gains? Well, newbie gains are going to be a massive amount of muscle that you can put in within the first six months to a year of working out. For a lot of natural athletes, this is gonna be somewhere around five to seven pounds of muscle. It's gonna be a massive amount. Your second year lifting, you're gonna get some diminishing returns on that. Maybe you're only putting on three to four pounds of muscle. After that, you're gonna start getting a lot of diminishing returns. Two years in, you're gonna be lucky if you're putting on two to three pounds of muscle per year, no matter what you do. Now, for people that are enhanced, this isn't so much the case, but a majority of people out there are natural. Whether you compete or not, unless you're using PEDs, you're natural. So if you're natural and you're only gonna be able to put on two to three pounds of muscle, I wanna steer you guys away from endless bulk cycles that don't get you anywhere. So it's well understood that in order to put on a pound of muscle, you only need about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. For most of us, that's gonna be somewhere between 180 and 220 grams of protein per day, depending on our height and our weight. What happens when a lot of guys get on a bulk cycle? They start thinking they need this outlandish, crazy amount of calories in order to get bigger. I commonly hear, mostly from skinnier guys that are younger, in that 18 to 22 age range, telling me that they're taking in 3,500, sometimes even 4,000 calories a day. This is such overkill, and I went through it myself when I was younger, thinking if I ate more, I would grow faster. That's simply not the case. If you can only put on two or three pounds of muscle per year, if your weight goes up 15 or 20 pounds. Think about it, guys. Run the numbers in your head. You put on 20 pounds, only two or three of that is muscle. The other 17 pounds is going to be fat. Now let me show you just what that looks like. This right here is a heaping five pounds of fat. So you go on a bulk cycle, put on 20 pounds, you've put on three of these. I mean, look at this. Three of these for just two to three pounds of muscle. And then what happens? You've got to go on another cut. And when you're cutting, you're going to naturally lose a little bit of muscle mass unless you are very, very specific with your diet and keeping track of your deficit to a degree where you are losing weight very slowly. The faster you lose the weight, the more muscle you're going to lose. That's just the way it is. So as a natural athlete, what are you to do? Well, I got bad news for you. You're gonna have to be patient. You see, if you're only putting on two to three pounds of muscle per year, you don't need to have a crazy bulk. All you have to do is eat slightly above maintenance. What would be maintenance? Well, for most people, it's not as high as they think it is. To calculate your maintenance calories, start off with your basal metabolic rate. Now for everybody, this number is going to be different. I think a good way to do it without going on and using complicated formulas is to take your current body weight and multiply that by 10. It's not exact, but it's close enough and it keeps you from having to use these wild formulas. Once you've done that, add about 300 calories for your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or we'll just call it NEAT because that's the acronym, a lot easier to say, and it's not as much of a mouthful. And then after that, we want to factor in our steps. I hate to break it to you guys, but lifting weights does not burn as many calories as you think it does. So for every mile you walk, we'll add 100 calories. If you're not walking more than five miles a day, the very good chance that your maintenance calories is only somewhere around 25 to 2700. Now for high activity athletes, it will be higher, but cardio doesn't burn as many calories as you might think. One hour of incredibly intense cardio may only burn up to 700 calories. I mean, you've got to be a real hard athlete to go over 700 calories in one hour and for most people 
the amount of effort it takes to get there means you're not doing a second hour. So at the very most, someone's maintenance calories, if they're a high performing athlete, probably not more than 3,300 at the most. That's factoring in their basal, their neat, and any cardio they do during the day. So if you wanna put on muscle, you really only need to be going two to 300 calories above that and making sure that you get your protein requirements. It's far more important that when you're in the gym, you're truly exhausting the muscle as opposed to eating more food. Now what is truly exhausting the muscle look like? Well that means if you're doing a set to 12, it doesn't mean you stop at 12, it means you can't go past 12 training to actual failure that's gonna be how you exhaust the muscle and you have to be honest with yourself when you put the weight down could you actually have kept going if the answer is yes that's your muscle you're leaving on the table there's no amount of calories that are gonna catch you up so I encourage you guys if you're a natural athlete just forget about bulking forever okay all you have to do is be in a slight calorie surplus to build muscle. And even then, if you're very strict with your protein, you could in theory be putting on muscle even while cutting or just maintaining. Personally, I'll never do a bulk for the rest of my life. I like being lean, and I don't really like cutting all that much if I don't have to. Now granted, real life does happen, and sometimes we go off our diet. But when you start thinking about bulking, it gives you an excuse to go out there and binge eat. And I'm not okay with that. I'd rather see you guys have a healthy balance, try to get healthy foods in every day, and just let go of the junk food. If you're bulking in order to eat junk food, you're just gonna be spinning your wheels for years. So with that, I encourage you guys to dial back, be more patient, and just trust the process that if you lift weights year after year, you will eventually get the body you want. It takes a long time. But hey, I'm here to help you guys. And as a side note, I just started putting the microphone into the frame. I want to hear, what do you guys think? Do you like the microphone being in the shot? Or did you like it before where it was above? Let me know what you guys think. It means a lot to me and it'll help me decide how I want to set up the frame in the future. So I'd love to hear from you guys. And with that, I'm going to leave this video here. But make sure that if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And also subscribe. It really helps me grow this channel. And with that, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. crazy this thing is this right here is five pounds of body fat i actually weighed it it came out to like 5.1 but it's close enough that's five pounds of fat can you imagine losing four of these you'd be sexy as hell